What is going on Lego Maniacs? It's Ty the Lego Guy here and today we're taking a look at the summer 2020 and the fall uh, Star Wars Lego sets and we're going to find out which ones we should invest in and which ones we should avoid. This is also uh, going to help out the collector just because the last thing we want to do is pay an arm and a leg because we didn't think we should buy a set or we didn't think it was going to appreciate that much or you know whatever other reason it could have been and uh, we end up missing out and then we really want this set but it's double triple its value and it's happened to me and I'm sure it's happened uh, to a lot of you guys that are listening so anyways I thought this, that this would be helpful for both the investor and collector uh, but enough talk let's get right into it and to start us off with the ultimate worst set that we should invest in or worry about paying a fortune for once it retires if we really want that set and we didn't sna snag it. Uh, I've gone with the General Grievous Starfighter uh, that's set 75286 with an $80 price point, $80 US. That's just ridiculous for 487 pieces. I'm not a huge price per piece guy. However, this one, <laughs> it's just bad. I would definitely avoid this one. Uh, not worth investing in. I don't know what it is about sets with Grievous in them, but they always are overpriced by Lego. At number two, we've gone with Anakin's Jedi Interceptor. Um, this is one I would definitely avoid. Uh, again, this to get the number out of, out of the way, it's set 75281. It's not that it's a bad set by any means. Uh, it's just, it is, it is what it is. They've made so many Jedi Interceptors in the past and I don't see this one appreciating very well. Also, the fact that Anakin has the complete wrong torso uh, doesn't help the value of this set. Um, but yeah, that comes in at number two for the worst set that we should avoid. And at number three, I've gone with the Knights of Ren transport ship that's set 75284. Now, bear in mind, I don't think this set's a bad set. I actually think it looks pretty good. However, Given the fact that sequel sets don't sell that well in the aftermarket leads me to believe that this set is one to avoid. Yes, maybe you buy a couple of them and you end up making money on this set because I don't think it's going to be remade anytime soon. However, it's just a high risk set in my opinion. And uh, I think that there's other sets on this uh, list that definitely would make the cut better to invest in uh, than this one. At number four, uh, we've gone with the Death Star Final Duel. That set 75291, I think this set actually looks pretty good. It's a very nice looking model. But the fact that we just had a set like this back in 2015, and this is basically a complete remake of that model, uh, leads, me to be leads me to believe that this set's not going to do that well. I think that you should maybe avoid this one. Also, the fact that the first one hasn't appreciated all that much. With that in mind, I think that this one should maybe be avoided. Uh, that's coming in at number four. At number five, we've gone with the Resistance ITS Transport. That's set 75293. And this really isn't the fifth worst set you should invest in. This is starting to get into the good stuff. The reason why I say, say that is because um, I think that this set's extremely unlikely to be remade once it retires. I don't think that's going to happen in a long time. Um, the reason why it's not higher on this list, however, is just because this actual ship is located at Galaxy Edge and uh, a lot of people don't know what this set is they don't know where it's from which leads me to believe that it's not that popular of a model however there are diehard collectors out there that would love to get their hands on a set like this something that's super obscure in Star Wars or more obscure is sometimes not a bad thing so I'm putting this one at number five it's not a terrible set to invest in it's just not the best set to invest in, as we'll see as we go up this list. At number six, I've gone with the AT-AT. -AT. That's set 75288. Now, you may be saying, Ty, there's been lots of AT-ATs that have been made in the past, and that is completely true. However, every single one of those AT-ATs has appreciated quite a bit. Um, you're, not, you're not hurting yourself by investing the, in this set. It's basically a for sure deal. I mean, when a set's made five, six times and they've all sold well after retirement, um, this leads me to believe that it's going to continue to be the same way with this at, -AT. It has a really good track record. Um, yeah, I wouldn't be too worried about investing in the at, -AT. At number seven, 
we've gone with none other than the 501st Legion Clone Troopers, uh, also known, better known as the uh, 501st Battle Pack. That's set 75280. Some people maybe would put this set higher on the list. Some people would put this set lower on the list. But as a Star Wars fan, I love Clone Troopers, and my favorite Clone Trooper Legion is the 501st. Also bear in mind that there are very few, if any, battle packs that have included clones that have sold bad. Uh, in fact, I even sold one of the worst ones, the uh, Clone Troopers vs. Um, Droidicas, and I still was able to double, double my money on that one. Actually, almost tripling, tripling my money on that battle pack. So, this doesn't quite fall into a battle pack category. However, I just think it's so popular and people love buying multiples of them that after maybe say a year or two after its retirement, there's gonna be people that maybe have got into Lego at that point, never got a chance to buy it. Maybe it's a kid that's just starting his collection. He absolutely loves and wants that 501st Battle Pack. And uh, yeah, they're willing to pay maybe 50% more for it um, after a year or two. That wouldn't surprise me. I wouldn't expect this set to be crazy expensive in the future once it retires, but I do expect you to be able to make some money on it. At number eight, we've gone with the Armored Assault Tank. That's set 75283. The reason why is the model is nothing to write home about. However, the minifigs in this set really is what makes it. Um, Ahsoka, you know, if you've been following any Lego trends, um, you know how much the Ahsoka fig is going for, it was a crazy expensive minifig. Sometimes people were paying 160 US for the Ahsoka minifig that came in the Rebel Frigate. Um, I believe that this set's going to appreciate very well with the minifigs. I also like the fact that it includes one of clone, uh, Ahsoka's clone troopers. Uh, yes, they may make more of those in the future. However, I just think based off of the Ahsoka fig and how well Ahsoka's done in the past, I wouldn't be scared about investing in this one. It definitely comes in, it comes in at number eight. At number nine, we've gone with the Razor Crest. That's set 75292. Now, although I think that this set is a little bit slightly overpriced for what it is, it's just so beloved by the Star Wars community. So many people love this uh, show and they love this ship, including myself. Um, I think it's also highly unlikely that this set's gonna be remade anytime soon after it retires. Yes, the TV show is very popular. However, looking at, you know, actual Star Wars TV shows that have been, in, that have come out in the past, uh, for instance, maybe um, like Clone Wars being the Twilight or, um, you know, with uh, Rebels being the Ghost. Those sets haven't been remade. Yes, the show is more popular or not more popular, but the ship is more popular than either of those ships. You know, I, I, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that. But still, I just I don't think it's going to be remade anytime soon. And once the set retires, I think you could definitely make some good money on it. And at number 10... With the top set, I think that um, people should invest in. We're going with the most Isley Cantina. That set seven five two nine zero. It's from the Master Builder series, guys. This set, I've seen barely anyone say anything bad about this set. With 21, 21 minifigs retailing for three hundred fifty US, you know, over three thousand pieces. It's a pretty good deal. It's a decent deal for what you're getting. And I just don't see this being remade anytime soon. Yes, you may be saying the assault on Hoth or the betrayal at Cloud City. You know, those sets weren't the greatest, but bear in mind, the assault on Hoth is still making some money and the betrayal at Cloud City actually is making a fair amount of money. Like it's selling for well over, far well over what it was retailing for. So I wouldn't be too concerned about that. The one thing I'd want to check out is how long this is on shelves. Now, bear in mind, those two sets we just mentioned were out for less than two years. So if this set follows in that same, the same way that they went, I do believe that you should probably pick this up. I think that's also going to help out with, um, you know, reselling it if it's out on shelves for two years or less. However, with how popular this set is and how many people love it, I think this set's going to go more so the way of a UCS set. I think it's going to be out more so for about three years. Uh, this is just speculation, but yeah, that's that's where I think that this set's going to fall. Definitely, it definitely falls in the top set I think that you should invest in. And last but not least, I thought that we should talk about the Star Wars, the Sith mosaics. 
I really don't have anything to go off of with these. They're completely new. Lego's really not done anything like this in the past. So I just avoid them uh, just to be smart. Um, yeah, but they don't, I can't say that they're bad. I can't say that they're good. I just don't know where they're going with these ones. Uh, I don't know how well they're going to appreciate in the future. So yeah, just bear that in mind. I thought I should mention them. And one more set that I thought that we should talk about is the Bespin Dual Set, that set 75294. This doesn't follow the same trend as the other models just because this is there's a limited supply of these of this model being made. Um, it's very rare. I missed out on it on release date. So for the collector, I'm going to say buy this as soon as you can. If you see it, buy it. Um, I'm searching for it currently. And if you're an investor, yeah, you're going to make money off this one, hands down. I mean, if you're a Star Wars collector, you love this set and you most likely love this scene. Anyways, that pretty well does, um, you know, to invest or not to invest, the uh, Star Wars fall and summer waves. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are on this. Um, if you disagree, if you agree, and actually just what your favorite set is out of the this uh, lineup, just because I think that there's a lot of good ones and I'm always anxious to find out your guys' opinions. Uh, and also just bear in mind as a disclaimer, this is not professional investing advice. Uh, invest at your own risk. But yeah, these are the ones that I think are gonna do well and the ones that I think are going to not do so well. Um, but yeah, that's all I got for today. But if you like this video, leave it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, definitely consider subscribing and click that bell so you're notified for any future investment videos that we do on this channel. We do at least one of them a month and I really enjoy doing them. Um, I find them fun and I find I think that they're helping you guys out as well. Um, but yeah, that's all I got for you again. But thanks again for watching and I'll catch you at the next one.